What is going on, y'all? Welcome back to the Locks DFS MLB Breakdown. My name is Addy Narang. I'm from LocksDFS.com, and I will be breaking down this eight-game main site on DraftKings and FanDuel for Monday, April 8th. Um, a few things to do before I get into that. First off, if you guys can go ahead and leave a like and comment on this video, not only would it mean a lot to me, but you will be entered into winning our free season pass of your choice. We run the same giveaway every single week where we give back to our most active, you know, viewers, um, basically most active viewers. I mean, those who are leaving positive likes or those who are leaving likes and positive comments, we, we take notice of that because we have our notifications on and, and we just like to give back with a free season pass of your choice. We announce that winner every Monday, which is today. So the winner for last week's giveaway is Tony Longwish. Tony, I've, I've seen him leave a lot of comments um, on a, a, a quite a few videos, positive stuff. Um, and so we are hooking him up with a free season pass of his choice. Tony, go ahead and DM at LoxDFS on Twitter, or you can DM me at ReallyAddy, and uh, we'll get you taken care of. You can pick a free season pass of your choice. Um, but that'll do it. So we'll get, we'll get right into this slate now. It's a really interesting slate. Um, only a few of real uh, notable pitching options. And aside from that, the rest of it is really a mess. But there is a ton, a ton of hitting options on this slate, uh, which makes sense if there's a lot of pitching options that are a mess. So to start it off, I think uh, my favorite uh, high price pitcher is no, is no surprise. It's going to be Justin Verlander. And I anticipate he'll come in pretty chalky because he's the only real starting pitcher that you feel uh, secure about on this slate. Um, dominant, I mean, dominant, dominant pitcher. Not not too much you can say. I'll pull up his 2018 numbers for you guys. Um, he's got a 3.28 XFIP to righties, 2.75 XFIP to lefties. Um, we kind of talked about why he's got a better XFIP to lefties uh, previously. A lot of these Houston pitchers have really good breaking, uh, like really good curveballs, really good sliders um, that help mitigate a lot of left-handed bats. So that'll certainly help him. Um, against a few a, a few left-handed bats in this in this Yankees lineup but it's not uh it's not the grade A Yankees lineup we're used to there's no Ann Duhar in here there's no Tula Whiskey no Giancarlo Stanton um and who knows when the lineup comes out who else may not be in there so it is a bit of a banged up lineup they do have a few lefties in there which Verlander can easily take care of and the really only righty that you're really overly concerned about is going to be Aaron Judge um Gary Sanchez obviously has home run power hit three of them yesterday but for 10.4k, Justin Verlander just way too underpriced for a SP1 uh, on a slate like this. I just feel like locking in that security makes a ton of sense. And it's not like you can't afford other high-priced bats. You may not be able to afford cores on this slate, but you could certainly afford other, uh, other excuse me, not high-priced bats, but other good bats in, in great spots. And, and I'm going to get into one of those uh, spots later on in this video, one of my favorite games to target for bats. Um if you come down a little bit farther, I think it's going to be a crapshoot as we get closer to lock about who people are going to play as their SP2. You may see some people without Verlander. I anticipate most will have Verlander. Uh, early ownership projections show guys like Homer Bailey popping as the second highest on SP2. Um, Eric Lauer is up there as well. Vince Velasquez generating some ownership, but there is some uh, there's some question marks around his um, his pitch limit if he's going to go more than five innings. Um, otherwise, I like him too. Julio Tehran and Coors, I've heard of his name. So it could be a mess at this SP2 spot, which is another reason why I feel pretty secure in locking in that SP1 with Verlander. Uh, but if you do want to go into this sort of dumpster diving range for SP2s, I do think Eric Lauer makes some sense. Um, beyond, besides the Yankees having the lowest team total at 3.6 versus Verlander, we have, uh, or the second lowest behind the Padres. We have the the Giants with the third lowest team total at three seven. Uh, they're playing in a huge pitchers park at AT and T. It's it's a great pitchers park. Um, Eric Lauer, I, I really don't have any redeeming qualities to tell you about him. Um, he's a low strikeout guy. He he has trouble walking guys. Um, he generates a decent amount of ground balls to lefties. Uh, he's got an amazing pickoff move to first, so no one can steal off of him. But aside from that, he's just sort of in damage prevention mode as far as a, an SP2 on the slate. You're looking for a guy who can maybe get you 10 to 12 fantasy points with a low risk of blowing up. Uh, and Eric Lauer seems to be that guy. I don't know if I'll necessarily be going there. Um, I may end up going in this dirty range somewhere here with somebody else. But uh, I, I, all I'm really uh, confident in on the slate is that you can lock in Jay, Vern, or Jay Verlander and he will... Uh, he will um, anchor down your starting pitching spots. Um, but with that being said, let's move on to bats. There's not too much else to talk about here at SP. Um, I'll leave the rest for members on the lock sheet. 
Uh, but going into bats, there's some real interesting spots here. So obviously we have a course field slate. I think the best way to show this is probably just the Vegas totals. We have a course field slate, which obviously comes with massive team totals and cores. 5.8 for the Rockies, 5.3 for Atlanta. Keep an eye on this Rockies lineup, though. It may come in fairly watered down. David Dahl looked like he had an oblique injury. Um striking out versus julio arias trevor story got hit in the calf with a fastball he looked a little gimpy he might not be in the lineup which could create a pretty watered down a rockies lineup which you might end up seeing a few julio tehran shares increase we've got some re reverse line movement in favor of uh in favor of atlanta i think that's pr primarily because of this colorado batting order um being a little banged up but also atlanta in a great spot they hit lefties great um so definitely look to some of these bats. But in addition, we have massive team totals here in Kansas City at uh, 9, rising up to 10 with the Mariners at 5-2 and the Royals at 4-9. We have the Phillies at 5-2. Uh, we have a, another 10 total in uh, Athletics Orioles with the Athletics rising from 4-9 to 5-5 five, five, uh, and the Orioles jumping from 4-2 to 4-6. So a plethora of options, even a nightcap to go after with a... Uh, with Trevor Cahill versus Julius Chassin. A lot of lefties are going to be in play in this matchup as well. Um, but the spot that I'm really looking towards for bats is going to be this Kansas City game. So like I said, if you do pay up for a guy like Justin Verlander, it kind of restricts you to maybe only one maybe one bat or two bats from cores because they're just so priced up. But what's not priced up is this KC game. I mean, you have um, this Kansas City batting order has come out. I think we're still waiting on... Uh, um, excuse me, I think we're still waiting on the Seattle one, yeah, but the Kansas City one's out, and you have this, like, massive, uh, you have massive power upside here, especially from, like, three through six, and then you got one, two speed and power upside with Witt and Alberto, and they're all, I mean, three through six is all sub 4k, which you can more than afford with Justin Verlander only being 10.4k, uh, Felix Hernandez, 2018, 1.85 home run per nine to lefties, 1.33 home runs per nine to righties, uh, giving up a massive amount of hard contact, 41.3% to lefties, 36.9% to righties. Fly ball rate is relatively high as well. So this is a spot that I'm going to look to for a lot of Kansas City bats. They did have some reverse line movement early in the day. Um, it's still here, 19% of bets on them, yet they move from plus 115 to plus 104. Uh, that is slight reverse line movement on them, uh, and obviously positive movement on the over. I'm going to attack both sides of this game. Uh, love the Kansas City side, though, uh, with a lot of these cheap guys. And then on the other side, you have um, Homer Bailey, who's uh, just the same pitching versus a Seattle team that has been uh, amazing to start this year. First, we'll go over Homer Bailey, 2.29 home runs per nine to lefties, 1.63 home run per nine to uh, righties, which is a incredibly high rate. And that it, it coincides with the hard contact that he's giving up 45.8% hard contact rate to righties, 35.4% uh, to lefties. Um, there's a little added uh, bonus in the fact that he may end up being higher owned than you guys think just because he's 5k so if you plug in a guy like Verlander and then plug in a guy like Homer Bailey at 5k you can still afford cores bats so we could see a lot of people end up going this route um, but I'll go ahead and target Homer Bailey with these Seattle bats Seattle um, I have it pulled up they have been the best team in baseball hitting uh, so far. Small sample size, uh, 458 plate appearances total, but a weighted runs created plus of 164, which is sort of the mecca of all hitting stats. It encapsulates everything, um, and these guys have been dominating. And uh, it doesn't look too fluky. I mean, they don't have a, uh, an inflated BABIP. They don't really have an inflated home run uh, per home run to fly ball percentage i mean the 302 babbitt is right in line with the league average babbitt for those who don't know is batting average balls in play um it's a good way to predict regression as far as like if a guy has a really high babbitt you can expect that to to regress negatively a bit it's a very simple way of putting it but it's just something to look at um but a 302 babbitt is right in line with the league average so these guys have just been raking they have a nice walk percentage a low strikeout percentage and then if we keep filtering this to pitching um and we look at uh we look at the bullpens to start this year. We have the Royals as by far the worst bullpen. Um, it was 6.78 XFIP. Uh, that's 0.8 higher than the next worst team. That's the Diamondbacks. Um, so definitely look towards a Seattle stack here. I like the lefties. Obviously, 2.25 home run per nine. Homer Bailey to lefties. So look towards like guys like Jay Bruce, uh, Malik Smith, um, 
And then, but you can always target the righties as well. Hanniger, Santana, and Carnacion. they are all in play. I'm big fans of all of them. So I'm going to really be looking at that game for some, for some uh, bats. Um, but with that being said, let's do the home run call. So I'm going to actually keep it in that game. For my first home run call, sub 4K, I want to go with Ryan O'Hearn versus Felix Hernandez. As I talked about, 1.85 home runs per uh, 1.85 home runs per nine to lefties Felix last year with a crazy hard contact rate Ryan O'Hearn just a power hitter from the left side of the plate 48.2 percent hard hit rate versus righties last year to go along with a 48.2 percent fly ball rate uh, that's a pretty good combination for a guy that's uh, likely to hit a lot of home runs this year uh, just absolutely love his spot with nearly a five team total versus Felix um, he'll be the low price home run call of the day um, and then the high price guy usually I go above 4k which i'm gonna do but usually i go up above, above 5k to keep it safe but here i'm just gonna go with jay bruce um gonna go just flip to the other side of the game i love his spot versus homer bailey i love his spot versus this horrible royals bullpen um he's a guy that's gonna hit for a ton of power uh i mean i think he already has five home runs this year uh three of them versus lefties last year didn't have a massive sample size but still hit the ball hard 33.7% of the time versus righties, and, and that comes along with a 49% fly ball rate, which versus a guy like Homer Bailey, who is prone to giving up a ton of fly balls that do leave the yard, um, that's a great spot for him as well. So those are going to be my uh, high and low price uh, home run calls of the day. Uh, with that being said, though, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. Make sure to leave a like and comment if you did enjoy. Um, I hope you guys win a ton of money tonight, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Peace.